Hello and welcome to the Creative Schools Week, online celebration 2021. My name is Fergal and I'll be your host for today. I'm so excited because we have taken everything that's great about Creative Schools Week and made this amazing jam-packed TV show. So get the popcorn out, sit back and enjoy. We received a huge number of artistic entries from schools all over the country, which will be featured throughout our incredible episodes. So well done on all your hard work and creativity. The last year has been a challenge for everyone. So it's fantastic to get to see so many skilled, ambitious and creative young people keeping us all on our toes. We would like to extend a huge thank you to the fabulous artists, creative practitioners and organizations who have worked with your schools. And another massive thank you to your teachers and your creative associates for all their support. The Creative Schools Initiative supports schools and centres to put the arts and creativity at the heart of children's and young people's lives. This initiative provides opportunities for children and young people to build their artistic and creative skills. This year our theme is Brave New Future, celebrating students' courage in the face of a tough year and looking forward towards a bright future. Before we kick off, I'm delighted to welcome a very important guest to open our online celebration today. Please give a very warm virtual welcome to the Director of the Arts Council, Maureen Kennelly. Thank you so much. And on behalf of the Arts Council and Creative Schools, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you all to our Creative Schools Week online celebration. In the next hour, you'll get to see the wonderful work created by children and young people in schools and youth reach centres all across the country. This work was developed over the last three years during their participation in creative schools. I'm absolutely blown away by the creativity, the ingenuity and the positivity you are about to see. It truly is an inspiration to us all. I'd like to especially thank you, the children and young people who fill your schools with creativity. And it's not just this week, but every week. I hope all of you enjoy Creative Schools Week as you learn about the many other creative school communities across the country. Enjoy every minute and thank you. Thank you, Maureen, for your time today at the Creative Schools Week online celebration. Now it's time to introduce our first Creative Schools feature of the day. From Cabra Community College, County Dublin, this is a video project with artist Dean Scurry, where students shared their positive experiences about living in Cabra featuring English teacher Jerry Day and students from the college. This is Inside the OK District. My name is Dean Scurry. Welcome to Cabra. This is Cabra Community College. Yo, Cabra! I'm from Cabra Community College and today I'm talking about Cabra Boxing Club. It's called Cabra Boxing Club and it's in Bano in Cabra. And I go because I love boxing and I've liked it all my life. Home, we're deep inside the cave, inside Cabra. And we're going to show you some of the more positive things about Cabra. Oh, hi there. I'm going to talk about some positive things in Cabra. One positive thing in Cabra is Nathan Barley GA Club. This club has helped me through a lot of tough times in my life and has kept me out of trouble. Yup, Cabra. So this is Daily Mount Park. It's in Fisbury, Cabra. Um, and a bit of history about this place. Uh, Phil Linna played here in 1977. Bob Marley played here in 1980. And it's the home of Bowles and uh, it's just a, a great part of the city, uh, a great part of Fisbury and Cabra, and you know, it has a bit of, a bit of strong history. I'm Tori Lee, and right now I'm standing outside a good shop in Cabra. It's called Londis, it's local, so it's easy to get there if it's raining now. For lunch, you can get two euro rolls, and so you don't need to buy a drink because Cabra Stone comes with it. I live in Cabra, it's a deadly place, your Cabra. Hi there, my name is Robert, 
and I'm, t- I'm talking about the positive things about Cabra. One very positive thing about Cabra is the Santa Maria Centre. It is run by Lorena. They they run bingo here as well as dancing, bowling and singing. Uh, most importantly, the centre supplies su- supplies meals on wheels to needy folk, 90 meals per day. This is something to be proud of. Yup, Cabra. The best thing about Cabra is everyone knows each other around Cabra. And yeah, we're, we all just like know each other. We're all like friendly to each other when we see each other. Like. Yeah, you Cabra. My name is Charlie. I go to the tech and I'm from Glass Nevin and I like going out with Dan Scully to record because I got out of school. This is the bogeys. Uh, this is where all the elves walk the dogs at me. And all the thin bars is home ground. They play the pitches back there. There's like five of them. There's two gag pitches and there's two uh, football pitches. This is Dingle's home ground as well. And there's a sports centre back there with a gym and a dance hall and football hall and there. You can go in and ask for your for the fight the Astro. If you want to play and fight the Astro. Hey, this is the box. If you want to see the real carpet, come down here. My name's Jeff and I go to Cabaret Community College and uh, I like the way we are filming this week. And uh, I learned that you could plug a speaker into your phone and it was good. How are you? My name is Connor Corbett. I want to tell you the most positive things about life here in Cabra. I want to talk about the barbershops barber around in Cabra. Here just beside Rocket Shipper is Fade, is Fade Cave, uh, where all the boys from Cabra come here and get the skin fade. Now if anyone here doesn't know what the skin fade is, the barber gets a sharp razor, shaves off the back of your head and the sides of your head and keeps it long on top. If you're coming here to Cabra with your friends, hang out with the barbers, talk about life, for example, football and Snapchat. All right, that's just a few examples. And finally, yup Cabra and up the dubs. The local guard team is named from barbers. Uh, my older brother, he plays with them. Sometimes I go and watch his matches with him and they're absolutely deadly and they're one of the best teams in Cabra. We came out today to talk about lemon tree. The three and ones are spectacular, with the curry sauce, the chips and the rice. Then you have the spice bags, you know, they're pretty spicy, you know yourself, they're pretty tasty and uh, you have the, the beef curry tries as well, the beef comes all the way from Cork, and the beef is great. I want to talk to you about the positive things to live in Cabra and England. One of them are the uh, Guardian community that they help us in our school about uh, the cycling group. And yeah, that's one of the, the good things about living in Cabra. Jump Cabra! Some of the other deadly things about Cabra are... Deadly Garden. The Cabra Woods. Cabra One, two, three. Oh. Yup, Cabra. Congratulations to Cabra Community College on your fantastic film. Great work. Well done. Next up, we have Helen Flanagan with her workshop titled How Screenwriting Works. Let's check it out. Hello, my name is Helen and I'm a filmmaker and screenwriter. And today I'm going to teach you a little bit about how screenwriting works. Screenwriting is writing for film or television and a screenplay is a story told through images, dialogue and sound. Because we can't see a character's thoughts, their feelings and emotions have to be communicated through either their actions or their words and only what the audience can see or hear. But for an audience that can be kind of boring to watch. So screenplays have to work really hard to keep the audience engaged. And screenwriters have a few different techniques that they use to keep the audience engaged. You don't have to remember all of these, but just so you know, the techniques are plot, structure and dramatic tension. The plot is the events of the film. Structure is giving your film a beginning, middle and an end. Dramatic tension is what keeps the audience wondering what's going to happen next. In this workshop, it's only seven minutes long. We're going to write a film that uses all of these techniques and all you're going to need is a pen and some paper. So screenwriters sometimes think of the film as the story of somebody who wants something very badly and is having trouble getting it. Thinking about your film in this way is a really simple way of giving your film a plot, giving it structure and dramatic tension. 
If our film is about somebody who wants something very, very badly and is having trouble getting it, we need to decide who that somebody is. So for the purpose of this workshop, that somebody is going to be you. Me. Yes, you, at home. Okay, I guess I'm in a film now. So I want you to decide what you want. What do you mean? What do you, as the character in your own film, want? Look around your immediate environment and think about something that you, as the character in your film, could want. It can be really simple. It could be that you want to make a cup of tea. It could be that your neighbours are really noisy and you, you want some peace and quiet. Uh, maybe you're going on holiday and you need to find your passport. It can be anything, but pick something. I want dinner. Okay, excellent. You have something now that you as the character wants. Um, and remember, you're in a film, so you have to find a way to show that to the audience. Great. So now you have the beginning of your film, which means at this point we can give the whole film some structure. And the most basic kind of structure that a film can have is to have a beginning, a middle and an end. We know the beginning of the film, so at this point we're going to decide what the end is. So I want you to have a think about whether the character in your film is going to get what they want at the end. Yes, absolutely, I get dinner at the end of this film. So now you have the beginning of your film, you know what the end is, so now we have to do the middle. Right. So if somebody wants something very badly and isn't having any trouble getting it, then the film is just over, it just ends. So I find it handy to think of the middle of the film as the trouble getting it part. So I don't just get dinner. So now I want you to think about how your character is going to get what they want. What is the first thing that they're going to do? What is their plan? At this point, we need to think of a big problem that's going to halt your character's plan. going to need to be something really massive that they're going to have to deal with before they can get what they want. Hi. Hey, uh, delivery for a helmet? Yeah, that's me. That's 25 euro. Give me one minute. I just need to go find some money. Just hang on one sec. In the middle of the film, your character will try to deal with the problem. So what's the first thing that the character does to try and resolve the problem? So the middle of our film can't just be the character doing the same thing over and over and over again because that would be really boring to watch. At this point in the story, they definitely can't succeed in solving the problem. So the pressure is on for them to try something new. So what does your character try next? One minute, one minute, I'll be there in one minute. You can have your character try a few different things, but at this point, things have to get much, much worse. At this point, your character is in the throes of despair. It seems like they have totally failed in getting what they want. And that's fine if you didn't want them to. But 
if you do want your character to succeed, it's at this. Their lowest moment, they remember something from earlier. It might be something they found or it could be something that they learned, but whatever it is, it's going to help them turn things around now. At this point, you might want to find a nice, neat way of wrapping the whole story up. And most importantly, don't forget to give your film a title. That was great fun, our very own home movies. Next up, we've got a video montage of artwork featuring some more of our creative schools followed by a film by students of Colonge de Chiron, County Kildare. This is a street art project that the transition year and fifth year students took part in in November 2020. The students worked with street artist James Carwin for a day, producing a series of personal works. A number of transition year students filmed the work and interviewed three of the students about the process and their perspectives on art and street art. Let's take a look. darker colors first and then I kind of layered it up on top and um, we stuck them onto these cardboards uh, we using duct tape and then we just put gloves on and then just went at it. Um, I'm here today because I found street art very interesting and it's something that caught my eye straight away. We used to do art in first year but then I decided to quit it um, which is something that I do regret as I find art is something that I hold very close to my heart. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's um, uh, do I do art or not? Um, no, I, I 
I don't do art, but um, yeah, so this is like out of my comfort zone completely. Um, I did a spray paint over the summer with my friend and I thought it was fun, so I thought might as well, you know. Do I like doing art? Um, yeah, I'd say I, I do like doing this kind of art. It's very free and you don't have to think about anything else or any standards to meet. So this piece behind me here, um, I originally wanted to do Squidward, but um, yeah, as you can see, it kind of went a bit wrong, but I just rolled with it, you know? And uh, yeah, it looks pretty sick, I think, to be honest. Oh, it looks great. Are you sure? Congratulations to all the schools for their fascinating range of visual art and the great street art film from the students of Colosh de Chiron. Now it's time to check out Galway Community Circus. They are Ireland's flagship organisation for youth and social circus, located in Galway City with a local, national and international remit. Their aim is to advance the artistic, personal and social development of young people through circus acts. Let's check them out.
Big thank you to Galway Community Circus. That was fantastic. Up next, we have Scullawera County Clare, who made a film about their Creative Schools Day, which they held in February this year during lockdown. The school got an amazing range of artists to work with the students remotely, and they produced some amazing work, as you will soon see. We are students in Skullwara in Estimon, County Clare. We held workshops and did surveys to help us to decide what types of activities interested us and we formed an online Creative Schools team. The Creative Schools team organised a Creative School Day for everyone in the school. We kicked off the day with special effects artist Aoife Murray. This is my favourite workshop as she showed us how to make cool stuff like fake skin putty. This workshop also gave us a great insight into what it was like working on film sets and having to make sure everyone's makeup was perfect all the time. Then we had a live Chanel stance workshop with Carter, which was really cool as you would consider them famous from TikTok. They also taught us a dance routine. They're going to come to school after lockdown and record the dance with us for social media. Next up was a class with Jade O'Connor where she taught us how she performs in many different areas of art. Then she showed us some modern dance moves. Some students choreographed their own dance routines in response to Jade's workshop. After lunch we had a talk with the fashion designer Helen Steele who told us how she got into designing. I love looking at her lovely colourful designs. We also had workshops from visual artist Anna Colomer and stylist Chloe Marco. Finally, we had a chat with architect Evelyn Darcy and we had to design our own responses to buildings using just art materials we had at home. And she gave us a great idea of what architecture is like. The Creative Schools team also organised a lockdown competition where we had to submit everything we made in lockdown, any type of art. There are prizes in every class in the school and it's completely free. We can also submit as often as we like. We are getting local judges to judge it. We're excited to see where the next phase of our creative school's journey will take us. Amazing submission by Skullwear. Congratulations to all involved. Shakespeare once wrote, the object of art is to give life a shape. So it's only fitting that next up we have Catherine Davis with her workshop titled Shakespeare, lifting it off the page. Hello everyone, my name is Cathy. I'm a secondary school teacher and a drama facilitator and I'm absolutely passionate about Shakespeare. Even though he lived and died over 400 years ago, his plays are still relevant today. Today's workshop is about my favourite play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is lots of love, misunderstanding, confusion, magic in the forest, and lots of running and lots of fun. We're going to do a very quick warm up and then you're going to do a very active four and a half minute version of the play. The best way to enjoy this workshop is to take part and to do what I'm doing. I hope you're all awake. First of all, before we start, you need some props or anything that resembles a prop or a costume. But you need something to do with first, magic is the most important one. So magic, make sure you can find something to do with magic, whether it's a wand or a flower. Number two, something to do with fighting. Nothing dangerous now, anything that you can use for fighting. And number three, something to do with marriage or wedding. So a veil, a a ring, whatever you want, okay? So now what I want you to do is to pause the video and go and find those props as quickly as you can. So, marriage, magic, fighting. Good luck. Well done, everyone. Have those ready for later. First of all, we're gonna do a really, really quick warm up. okay? So we're going to do a shake out, which you use your hands and your feet for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, 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 one. Woo! Okay, hopefully you're feeling a little bit awake and we're going to do a little pat down. So let's pat down. 
Okay, and get that blood circulating all over your body, all around, all the way down to your toes, and get that body really, really loose, and just let everything hang out. Brilliant, okay. So now, what we're gonna do next is that you're going to have to put an action or a gesture to the word that I'm going to say to you. So you don't have to do what I'm doing. You can make up your own. So whatever comes comfortably to you, you do. Okay, so, and if you want to, you can use your props, but we'll probably use those more later. So, love. Wake up. Ooh. Sleep. Magic. Fighting. Run. The woods. Be angry or vexed. Urgh. Marriage. Death. So we're going to do that all over again. And you can repeat this as many times as you want. Love. Wake up. Sleep. Magic. Fighting. Run. Become a tree. Be angry or vexed. Marriage. Death. Great. Now we have the lines from the play which goes with those actions. So see if you can work out which one goes with which. What angel wakes me? Sleep thou. I will wed thee. Oh, how I love thee. Run through fire. Full of vexation come I. Die the death. Out of this wood. I serve the fairy queen. Ill met by moonlight proud Titania. Now we're going to do a four and a half minute version of the play. The most important thing is that you join in and do what I'm doing. You feel free to use your props and do all the actions. Our play begins in ancient Athens in the court of Duke Theseus. He has a new fiance, Hippolyta, and says to her, I will wed thee. Aegeus, a nobleman, comes to court to see Duke Theseus because his daughter, Hermia, refuses to marry a young man called Demetrius. Aegeus says, full of vexation come I. But Hermia loves a young man called Lysander, while Hermia's best friend, Helena, loves Demetrius. Demetrius used to love Helena, but Demetrius has rejected Helena and wants to marry Hermia. Instead, under the law of Athens, Hermia must obey her father. If she doesn't, the law says she should be put to death or live as a nun. Hermia and Lysander decide to run away to Lysander's aunt's house, which is deep in the woods, beyond the laws of Athens. Hermia tells Helena of the plan to run away to the woods. Helena thinks if she tells Demetrius that he might love her again. Meanwhile, a group of workmen known as the Mechanicals are planning to present a play at Duke Theseus's wedding. They are rehearsing a lamentable play full of love and death. Sweet Bully Bottom is to play Pyramus, but he wants to play all the parts, including a lion. In the woods, the king and queen of fairies, Oberon and Titania, are fighting. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. Oberon decides to punish Titania. He orders Puck, one of his fairies, to find a magic flower he can use on Titania that will make her fall in love with the next thing that she sees. Meanwhile, Demetrius has run into the woods, followed by Helena. Demetrius is vexed with Helena and tells her he doesn't love her and to leave him alone. Oberon overhears their fighting and feels sorry for Helena. When Puck gets back with the magic flower, Oberon tells him to pour the magic flower on the eyes of Demetrius. Oberon pours the rest of the magic juice on the eyelids of the sleeping Titania. Lysander and Hermia, faint with wandering in the wood, lie down to sleep. Puck spots Lysander and pours the magic flower onto his eyelids as he sleeps. But he's the wrong guy. Meanwhile, Helena finds Lysander and wakes him up. He immediately falls madly in love with Helena and declares, Run through fire I will for thy sweet sake. And so Lysander runs away from the sleeping Hermia. In another part of the wood, the mechanicals are rehearsing their play. 
Puck uses magic to transform Bottom, giving him the head of a donkey. Titania wakes up and instantly falls in love with him and shouts, Oh, how I love thee! Oberon is pleased that Titania has fallen in love with a man with a donkey's head. However, Oberon becomes vexed with Puck when it becomes obvious that Puck has put the magic juice on the wrong guy's eyes. Demetrius, worn out from all the confusion, falls asleep. Oberon squeezes some magic juice onto Demetrius' eyelids. Helena runs into the same part of the woods where Demetrius is sleeping. Lysander runs in too. They wake Demetrius up and the first person he sees is Helena. He's in love. Helena is confused. Demetrius and Lysander both say they love her. Then Hermia runs in looking for Lysander. She sees him and Demetrius fighting over Helena and blames Helena for stealing Lysander from her. Oberon is angry with Puck for messing up again. He orders Puck to sort things out. Puck guides each of the lovers into a place into the woods where they all fall asleep. Puck undoes the spell on Lysander so that he will be back in love with Hermia. Meanwhile, Oberon has decided to end his fighting with Titania and takes pity on her and releases her from the spell of the magic juice. Duke Theseus is out hunting and finds the four lovers all asleep. He wakes them up. Demetrius still under the spell of the magic juice. Loves Helena. Lysander released from the spell loves Hermia. At last it is time for the wedding. Theseus and Hippolyta are married. Demetrius and Helena are married. Lysander and Hermia are married. The Mechanicals perform their play for the wedding guests. Hippolyta remarks that this is the silliest stuff that I ever heard. The humans go to sleep and the fairies continue with their magic. The end. I hope you all enjoyed that. That was excellent. A big thank you to Katrin for such a fantastic workshop. Now it's time to introduce our next Creative Schools feature from Presentation Secondary School, Warrenmount, County Dublin, who explored student creativity through podcasting and filmmaking. This is a film they made where we can see the students trying out the different art forms and how they got on with them. My name is Lottie and I participated in this workshop held by Dev. I enjoyed doing this workshop as it helped me understand podcasts, movie making and more areas of technology. My favourite part was doing the podcasts. Um, I worked in a group with my friend and we picked sustainable fashion and it was so much fun because we had to, we got to add our own style to the podcast and make it funny and we just got to be ourselves really, which was so much fun. I really enjoyed the podcast workshop. Over the lockdown, I started listening to podcasts and always wondered how it got to be a podcast. I really enjoyed making the intro music and it was an overall fun experience. Hey, it's Zoe from Transition Year at Marmond. I done the podcast and the movie workshop for creative skills and I found it so much fun. I learned so much from it. My favourite part of the programme was getting to record the short film and exploring all the different camera angles. It has inspired me so much to create my own movie and podcast.
Hi everyone, my name is Lottie. And I'm Katie. Welcome to our podcast. Our podcast is all about sustainable fashion. We'll be sharing our favourite places to go thrift shopping and giving you all ideas how to recycle your own old clothing. Sustainable fashion has been a topic we've grown to love these past few months. By listening to our podcast, hopefully you'll understand the advantages of sustainable fashion and the impact it has on our earth. We'll see you all in the next episode. Bye! Hey, my name's Lily. And my name's Georgia, and sadly, Kate can't come be here with us today, but we have her on FaceTime, so here she is. Hi, I'm Katie, and welcome to our podcast. And welcome, welcome to, to the Terrible, Terrible Tales, Tales of Gen Z. Gen Z. The main topics we will be discussing on our podcast are unsolved cases, serial killers and conspiracy theories. Some of the topics we will be discussing are the Mandela Effect, the mysterious death of Elisa Lam, the Zodiac Killer and much more. This is going to be a more mysterious and kind of creepy podcast, so the best time to listen to it is before you go to sleep. <laughs> Don't mind what, it doesn't matter what time you listen to it. We just hope that you enjoy listening to it much more than we enjoy making it. What amazing submissions by Presentation Secondary School Warren Mount. A huge well done to those involved. I'm really excited to be joined by our next guest, Irish artist Shane Gillen. Shane, how are you? Hey Ferg, how are you? It is good to see you, my friend. You have been keeping the nation alive with some pretty great pieces of art over the past while. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's good to see you too, if 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 only uh, virtually. But anyway, <laughs> we'll it, see each other in person soon. Am I right in saying that this is the? It's it's we're on it. The one year anniversary of the famous Michael D. portrait. Yeah, it was just actually this this weekend just gone. Um, yeah, I mean a year ago. Firstly, how depressing that we're still <laughs> in this a year on, but. But at least there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel. I think everyone's kind of feeling that. So at least there's that. I mean, when I started drawing, I <laughs> I wasn't sure was I <laughs> was I just going to be drawing forevermore um, because yeah, everything came to a standstill, didn't it? This time last year. But yeah, the first one I did was a portrait of, of Michael D. Higgins this time last year. Yeah, and on the, like this is an amazing story, Shane, because you've always been involved with being creative. You know, you, you were a magician for a while. You're also a creative director. You look after other talents around the country. But here's the thing. You had a sketch pad at home, a couple of felt pens and a pencil, and you just said, do you know, I'm bored. And you went out, and it has turned into something beautiful. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened. I, I um exactly that i'm i'm a person who's creative by nature it's just it's in me uh i i can't do maths i can't do accounts i you know my brain doesn't function that way i can do english and i can do art and it, they've always been the two loves of mine uh in school as well and they're just i've always been really passionate about both um i suppose with art uh you know just with work and and life i ended up you know i i sort of excelled at it as a child but uh, just life happened, you know, and and I ended up. I suppose like I'd be lying if I said I didn't do art like since the leaving cert because mm. just through work, as you said, I'm a creative director. I do all of our, you know, we we look after a lot of different artists. I do all of their artwork digitally. I've always done that, you know. I I always have a, a say in the kind of creative campaign. So I suppose that, that absolutely is art. But it, but in terms of like the bare bones of art, which is as you mentioned, like a couple of pens and a sketch pad. Like I hadn't drawn since I was about 18, I'd say, like the, when I did my leave insert. Young people out there that are watching this and want to get into art and, 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 you know, they're like you, they're creative and they want to kind of, you know, make it out there and, and they need to be told sometimes that, you know, it can be done. So what would be your message to them, anyone that wants to get involved in art or doing what you're doing out there? My message to them is probably what my message to myself would have been. Um, and one that I still struggle with, and I think any human would, but I, I think a big one is to like, just stay your lane. And we're in a world now where everyone can give an opinion. And because it's art, everyone does give opinion, an opinion because over time we've just been, you know, we've been sort of conditioned to give your opinions on art or music or any of these things that we all decide we're experts on. And 
I know that when I started doing this, like I got dogs abuse from some random egghead, you know, like anonymous accounts online and stuff. And someone once told me that you always ever remember, you always ever hear about the plane that crashes, but never the one that lands. So like for the amount of lovely comments I was getting, the ones that were like really sticking with me were like some some of the horrible ones. And it was really actually getting to me because usually I'd be like, in my own role, in my job, like I'd be telling our own clients like not to worry about that kind of stuff. But I'd never really been in the fire, firing line of it. Mm. And then I was like, oh, is there any point doing this? But like it was only, th- you know, three or four relative to, you know, thousands of people who were saying great things. But I, I've learned definitely, I know that this time this year compared to this time, I know that now compared to this time last year, like if someone goes, that's crap, like I... I I don't care, you know, and I think, yeah, to try and worry less about that and stay your lane would be, I mean, not just for art, I think for anything, but art in particular, because like, my God, it's also, you know, one person's, you know, Caravaggio is someone else's, you know, it's crap, like you don't know. So it's also subjective. So yeah, I think um, stay in your lane and just minding, minding yourself within that lane is so important. Thank you, Shane, for joining us on the Creative Schools Week online celebration. Up next, we have CBS High School County Tipperary. Every student in the school was invited to digitally submit an idea or design for a mural on Google Classroom. Artist Magda Carroll was then commissioned to facilitate a workshop and realize a final design of the mural based on student ideas. Over 20 students from first to fifth year got the opportunity to partake in a socially distanced outdoor spray paint workshop with Magda. This is a time-lapse film of the creation of the mural. Outstanding submissions by CBS High School. Congratulations to all involved. And now, our final film for today features St. Vincent Secondary School, County Cork. The school held a multicultural day, and this is a short film of what looked like a fantastic experience. Hello, my name is James Dean. I'm the principal of St. Vincent Secondary School. Today I'd like to say how proud we are as a school and a community of all our students. We are delighted that we could bring all our cultures together here today and we are so proud that our students responded so vividly and so passionately about their home countries and about their experiences here in Ireland. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Prami and I'm from Bangladesh. Hi, my name is Ella and I'm from the Philippines. And we are the UNICEF representatives. The United Nations Rights of the Child Article Number 7 states that every child has a right to a name and nationality. Which is why today we are holding a multicultural day. Mr. Dean, I'm signing on behalf of Ireland today and we're very proud of our multicultural day here in St. Vincent's. Uh, Alex Denby, I'm a PE and French teacher in St. Vincent's and I'm signing uh, for England, for my father, and uh, pour la France aussi pour ma mère. Okay? Okay, my name is Hannah from Ethiopia. I'm Mr. Levis, and I'm signing for Ireland. That's fine. I'm Rare, and I'm signing for Hello. I'm Miss Ryan, and I'm signing for Ireland. Hi, it's Michelle, Miss Kincaid, August, it's us, Irma. My name Well done to St. Vincent's Secondary School on their fabulous film. What a show, everyone. That's it from me until next time. On behalf of Creative Schools, I would like to thank everyone for all their work and for their wonderful creations. Before we head off, all of us here from Creative Schools would like to give some special shout outs to some very special people. The Creative Associates for their time and dedication in producing some fantastic workshops for us to partake in. Thank you to the artists and organizations for providing us with some great inside knowledge into their everyday role. Thank you to all the children and young people who took part and submitted such amazing entries. You deserve all the praise. And finally, a huge thank you to all the teachers for their dedication and support. Thank you all again for taking part with your amazing projects. That's it from all of us at Creative Schools Week online celebration. Have a fantastic week, have some fun and celebrate. Make sure to share your photos and videos of your Creative Schools Week under the hashtag Creative Schools. Have a great one and stay safe.